Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Today I wanted to do a video and discuss Violet. Uh, we're going to cover probably dandelion too. Um, I want to do a lot of medicinal videos. Uh, this is a subject that is currently exploding, uh, that and foraging. Violet, and I've got a basket here. Picked this up this year around Christmas time at one of the Christmas events we went to. Found some beautiful baskets. I've got a very large one, so you'll be seeing them throughout our plant videos. Yeah, I'm man enough to tote a basket around. Uh, the reason I've got a mesh bag that I forage mushrooms and different things in, the problem I have with the mesh bags is when I get back to my house, everything is crushed and matted because in this basket it'll stay nice and pretty. That's my, and not all messed up. So if I need to try to further identify something I've picked up, usually I won't put a mushroom that I don't know what he is in with anything else, but I can keep things without being squished. Um, I'm gonna set this basket down here. Um, I have a couple of books and I made some notes because y'all know how I am. I get to rambling, I will, but the, the three books that I use for this particular video, this one is The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. I know a lot of you have seen this book in advertisements through Facebook, whatever else. It is a good book. We are going to do an extensive just book video. I'm going to review all of these books I have. I'm steadily collecting books. I pick up new books. This one is probably one of my all-time favorites as far as knowledge. This is the Indian Herbology of North America. I'm going to take some stuff information from it. I also, this is my newest book. This is Southeast Medicinal Plants. This is a great book for the Southeastern. These books are regional. There's one for all parts of the United States. It's like the Peterson's Field Guide. Uh, this book has good color photos in it. Uh, and I've got my notes in there. If I open it up, it's probably going to blow them away. But you see, and I'm sure the camera's not going to auto-focus up to this, but it's it's full of color photos, a little bit of how to make the medicine. Uh, so these are the three books that I'm going to use in this video. So let's get started on this. I'm going to lay them down right here. Um, and I'm going to pretty much just read you from my notes that I have. That way I don't get sidetracked. But Violet is the Viola species. There there's over 400 species of viola. Uh, there's over 40 in this in the southeastern part of the United States where I live. They're, they're anywhere from yellow to purple to white. Um, but it's been agreed on that most commonly used is the blue and sometimes the white. More so the blue species of violet. I've added a lot of clips in here. Currently where I'm standing, they're growing pretty much widespread. You see this little creek that runs here by us, uh, but they're also up around my yard. I have got a few in pots. I've got a few that I have transplanted. I'm currently transplanting a lot of plants to my yard. Um, but anyway, it's been agreed on that the purple and bluish colors are the best to use, followed by prop white. Uh, they are edible and medicinal. I'm a nibbler. I go by, I pick up plants. There's one right here. This is the heart-shaped leaf. They're growing everywhere. You're going to see me eat a lot of plants raw, a few mushrooms raw. I am not encouraging you to start eating raw plants. Most everything needs to be washed and cooked. I do this because that's just the way I do things. I find my taste I found what a plant tastes like I do always know that it's safe to eat I do check the underside to see if there's aphids bugs any kind of creepy crawlies on it and I eat them they've been used in salads uh, the petals teas whatever the leaves are heart shaped slightly toothed the nectar spur is pointed back toward the plant when you look at the bloom the nectar spur will be pointed back down to the plant they're easy to use lymph movers. They cool off inflammation, irritation, moistening, and used for dry cough by draining fluid from deep in the lungs. A dry cough is because there's fluid in your lungs, but it's deep enough when you cough, it don't move. So you think, well, there's no moisture in my lungs. 
From me studying this, there is moisture in your lungs. It's just deep down in there. This plant will help relieve that and drain that fluid out of there. They have been used in cancer formulas. They're commonly used to help the swelling and lymph glands and are specific to the breast. The leaves have been infused and used topically in skin conditions and to relieve pain in skin cancers, cancer growths. They'll relieve the pain if you make an infusion of the oil or an infusion with water like a tea and rub that or, or apply it into a wet rag and hold it and keep it on that growth wherever it may be. They have also been used as a tea to detoxify the blood and other parts of the body. One lady in one of the, in the American, the Indian Herbology of North America, there's a lady by the name of Margaret, reported that it helped cure cancer that was in her throat by making a tea and drinking it on a daily basis for a period of time. You can tincture it, you can make a tea, you can infuse it in oil. The oil would be for the skin conditions. It can be eaten raw, but older leaves, it says, needs to be cooked. In the foraging group that I'm in in Mississippi, uh, there's a Mississippi foraging community. If you're in Mississippi, I encourage you to join that group. Uh, it's got some great administration. There's a lot of knowledgeable members in there. It, it is not one of those groups that if you ask a, what we call a dumb question sometimes, people don't get on there and bash you for not knowing something. Most of the people in this group, this is one of the greatest groups I've ever been in because the people there seem to want to help. Even if it's somebody that just constantly posting pictures and asking questions, and we may have done pointed this out 200 times, somebody will come in on there and say, that's what this is. Yes, you're right. Because we want people to learn. I realize there's a lot of people getting into this, and that's part of the reason I'm making these videos. But there was a lady on there, I saw she had picked a bunch of these and she had just sauteed them and she said they were delicious. So you can cook them. Uh, it's been reported they've been put in soups and stews. It says that they will help thicken the liquid because of the, the astringent qualities of the leaves. They're very rich in vitamins A and C. Uh, and then my friend Ryan Albritton, he wrote a piece and put it in the foraging community on this plant and I read it and it was amazing and he talked about everything it done. He personally had a testimony of it helping him when he had lymphoma. He said it was a game changer for him. It helped him and, and part of what got him into plant medicine. But he said you can take a tea, infuse just the blue petals of this violet, put them in hot water and let them sit and soak for 10, 15 minutes. If you want to make it stronger, it can soak up to 24 hours. You let it soak, it'll turn that water to a deep purple color. And we may do this at the end of this video. We'll see if I find enough, pick enough leaves in my basket and do it. Once you've got a very beautiful purple liquid of a tea, squeeze in some fresh lemon juice and it'll turn to a bright pink instantly. So he called it a magic trick. So anyway, uh, you might want to try that. Let's look around and see what else we can find. I'm going to put these books up. Y'all, as I'm out here foraging, one of my favorite things to find this time of year, early spring, which it's April, is these greenbrier shoots. Now you notice this greenbrier is a real hard woody vine, but you see this tender shoot right here, and I'll get you some clips of them. If that'll just snap off, 
Sometimes they've got ants on them. That's one of my favorite things to eat. They somewhat like asparagus maybe, I don't know. But this has a really good flavor. Very tender, good to eat raw. I'm gonna pick me a few of these green briars right here to put in my basket to take home for a snack. Uh, if you're concerned about over harvest of these violets, that's not really something that we're concerned with, especially here in the southeast. They pretty much grow everywhere. So I, I know that I showed my basket and there was quite a few in there. So a lot of plants, the general rule in harvesting wild plants. And y'all, these are delicious. Make sure there ain't no ants on it. Is to take like a third. Some people say half, but a third, you think of it like this, there's a third to reseed, there's a third for the animals, and a third for me. Keep that in mind. Okay, so I've just made some hot water with my coffee pot. I'm just going to drop petals in it. I do not know how many it requires, but we're going to put several in it since we've got plenty. We're going to let that infuse for about 10, 15 minutes. You see how this is, I've been stirring it a little, how it's got a good blue tint to it. And it turned it pink not real pink i feel like it would have gotten darker pink had we had uh let it sit longer okay for dandelion i wanted to bring these in here dig them up where you could get a good look because where they was at you really couldn't tell a lot about the leaf structure you see these leaves, how they're shaped. You see these roots. These are very small. They get a lot larger than this. This one, I broke the root off trying to dig it up to get the whole plant, but I wanted to get a good look at these leaves. Also, the flowers. And you know they grow those big puffball looking flowers on the top. Okay, I brought the dandelion inside because the wind is just crazy out there and uh, chicken steadily crowing right where these are growing. Now, I have mowed most of my dandelions up, the ones that I hadn't already harvested this year. So I brought them inside so I could show you a little bit about, and I picked what blooms there was out there uh, to put in my basket to make some uh, stuff with. I'm not sure if I'm going to make, now you can make a jelly out of those leaves. I've seen the recipe, it's floating around on the internet where you take just the blooms, pick all the green off, and use just the yellow blooms, and you make a good dandelion jelly. Uh, this plant is edible. I have picked these leaves, put it and the blooms in salad. Y'all know I'm a nibbler. I go by and I pick these little, little uh, the flower caps off like this, and I just eat them. They're a little bit bitter. I did read somewhere early on, that when you taste that, the more bitter it is, the more your soil needs condition. Once your soil is right and, and going to grow good plants, you don't usually have a lot of dandelions. This root is designed to break up. If you've got a lot of hard packed ground, that's where you're going to see a lot of dandelions because this root is designed to go down and it kind of helps break open the soil. Curly dock and yellow dock do the same things. But uh, 
this is good in a salad. I have put it in several salads. Uh, I, I, from time to time, go pick several various wild plants, medicinal plant, or just edible plants. Make me a salad out of them. But dandelion, this is Taraxacum <coughs> officinale. <coughs> Excuse me. It is edible raw and cooked, used for tea. The roots dried. <coughs> I do have a dried root. This is a dried root here. I don't know if you can see in this, but I'll lay it here too. Um, and grind it or chop it up finely and it makes a coffee or a coffee substitute. Uh, it can be cooked, sautéed, whatever. It says high in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, especially vitamins B, C, G, and K. Has a lot of medicinally. It's good for digestive problems, cleanses the liver, kidneys, and the gallbladder. It can also detoxify the body as well as the violet did. Uh, help the urinary tract, which that's goldenrod's what I use that for mainly, but it will help the urinary tract. It's good for skin wounds, warts, and uh, corns. So you can make a, an infusion with oil or whatever, or just probably spit poultice the plant, apply it to those areas, cover it, leave it on there, soak it into that. It'll help get rid of those. Um, it prevents iron deficiency anemia, boosts the immune system, uh, and fights arthritis and helps eliminate excess sodium that's in the body and bring down your blood pressure. So it can do a lot for you. Uh, this is a very good plant to just eat. You get a lot of the minerals eating it, but you can make infusions out of it. Uh, you can tincture it. Uh, you can tincture the root. The root is probably the most used medicinal part of the plant. Um, it seems, especially later in the year, where, especially if you've got it in the fall and you know where those roots are, and the stuff starts going back into the ground, the roots will be the most strongest later in the fall times, but they're growing, they're good now, the whole plant is used, uh, but I wanted to get some good clips of this inside so you can see and positive. A lot of people mix this up with wild lettuce, they are somewhat similar in leaf structure, uh, I did do a video earlier on identifying between dandelion and, and uh, wild lettuce. Wild lettuce is a lot larger plant, grows on a huge stalk later in the year. There's no mixing them up once you've identified them because wild lettuce gets huge, big leaves. This gets a little bigger than this, but this is a fairly decent size one. They get probably twice this size. Uh, and I'm not going to say they don't get bigger, but we're going to just say commonly. And... Uh, like I said, here in my yard, once I start mowing, I clean up. I did specifically leave a lot of this stuff where I could video it. But thank y'all for watching my videos. If there's any specific plants you want me to cover, uh, I'll be doing this. I pull my information straight from books. I don't try to sit here and remember everything and, and just try to go on because it's easy to confuse stuff. And when you're dealing with medicinal plants and people's banking on your videos, they want to know what the book says. If you get up with me on my Instagram or my email or my uh, Facebook, you can contact me there. I can send you information. I would recommend you invest in some of these books if you're going to do medicinal plants. But thank y'all for watching my videos. If you want to see me do certain plants, let me know. We're going to try to cover a lot of plants this summer. I'm going to try to pack them into videos. I'm going to try to keep the videos in a manageable time. I can't make promises because you got to get, get the information out there. But thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all next time on Spirit of the Outdoors. Y'all have a good one.